all of the following are included in criteria for diagnosis of post cardiac injury syndromes after cardiac injury except first of all you need to know what do you mean by the term post cardiac injury syndrome this is a kind of a pericardial injury syndrome and it's of three types according to the ESC guidelines the first type is post mi pericarditis which usually happens after a STEMI and post mi pericarditis can be further subdivided into early post mi pericarditis and late post mi pericarditis which is also referred to as something called as dressless syndrome early post mi pericarditis typically happens in the first week after STEMI and uh, it usually happens after a very large or a massive STEMI generally it tends to uh, present at around day two day three itself very early in the course and treatment is just uh, going to be aspirin just increase the dose of aspirin that the patient is already getting that's going to be the most important treatment for early post mi pericarditis and late post mi pericarditis is called as dressless syndrome is going to have an autoimmune background the typical timing of this late post mi pericarditis is somewhere around two weeks to two months and has a lot of other autoimmune manifestations like pericardial effusions uh, sometimes pleural effusions even left lower lobe consolidation can happen and arthritis can be there fever can be there in the patient so that was going to be seen in patients with dressless syndrome and one of the important changes in ek that will be very commonly asked in neat ss exams is the fact that uh, if you have a persistently positive t wave normally in a STEMI patient T wave inversions are extremely common in the infarcted territory and later on it might become upright but T wave inversions persist for a long period of time after a STEMI but if you see a persistently upright T wave or alternatively if the T wave inversion quickly becomes positive within a couple of days this is a very very sensitive and specific finding for post MA pericarditis in fact this is one of the very important findings persistently upright T waves in the infarcted territory or a quick transition from an inverted T wave to a positive T wave within a couple of days or three is what uh, is going to be very sensitive and specific for diagnosis of early post MA pericarditis it's a very very important question for neat assess. and the second type of post cardiac injury syndrome is going to be post pericarditis or post cardiotomy pericarditis after cardiac surgery you can get pericarditis that's called post cardiotomy pericarditis and the third form of pcas is going to be post traumatic pericarditis which could be an iatrogenic trauma or a non iatrogenic trauma non iatrogenic trauma could be a sharp injury to the chest wall or could be a blunt injury to the chest wall as well so this is post traumatic pericarditis and what are the criteria to diagnose post cardiac injury syndrome so this is proposed by european society of cardiology this is not a standard criteria but still you need to know about this so number one is fever without an alternative cause number two presence of pleuritic chest pain number three presence of pericardial or pleural drops number four presence of pericardial and or pleural effusion number five pleural effusion with an elevated crp remember it's a pericarditis uh, syndrome or a pericardial problem so even though there could be underlying myocardial injury that doesn't define this post cardiac injury syndrome so that is the reason why elevated troponins is not something that is uh, used in the criteria for diagnosis of post cardiac injury syndrome that is why the right answer for this question is going to be option number c this flow chart is an excerpt from the european society of cardiology guidelines with regards to post cardiac injury syndrome you all know how to make a diagnosis of pcas which i have discussed already but how will you treat it it's also very important for your need assess exams the first line treatment is going to be with aspirin or nsaids plus colgesin to prevent the risk of relapse and of course you're going to go for excess restriction as well and second line treatment is going to be with low dose corticosteroids especially if there is a contraindication to first line therapy and third line therapy uh, will be with uh, immunosuppressive agents like azathioprine or immunomodulator like anakindra and the fourth line uh, treatment in refractory cases will be with iv immunoglobulin or other expansive options like pericardiectomy as well 
But one important point which I want to tell is the fact that in post MI pericarditis, please avoid NSAIDs and corticosteroids. Especially in early post MI pericarditis, NSAIDs and corticosteroids are absolutely contraindicated. That is because NSAIDs and corticosteroids will impair the healing process and will prevent the conversion of the infected area into scar tissue. So they are going to predispose to the risk of development of ventricular free wall rupture. So that is why in post MA pericarditis, the only treatment is going to be aspirin. Just increase the dose of aspirin, that's going to be more than enough. Please avoid NSAIDs and corticosteroids, especially in the early post MA pericarditis. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder.